This program is brought to you by Great Basin College and is sponsored by Barrick Gold North America. Welcome to the oral history recording of the Great Basin Indian Archives. We are interviewing elders of the Great Basin. This recording is available to students and researchers at Great Basin College in Elko, Nevada, as well as on the Great Basin Indian Archives website at www.gbcnv.edu forward slash gbia. My name is Delaine George, and I'm from the Duckwater Shoshone tribe. And my family is from the Adams family, and my dad from the George family, and they came from Beatty, around there, somewhere. My mom came up, as the story goes, she came up from uh, uh, Beatty or somewhere from there, and she met my dad here, and they got off to a good start, so they settled here. I have three brothers, two which have gone on, and one sister, and we all live here in Duckwater now, and I have numerous nieces and nephews and grandsons, and one daughter, uh, Lisa, and and we just love it here. Uh, but we first settled up there um, behind behind that White House by Virginia's. That's where we first lived, and it, we had no no uh, water or electricity, and we just lived off the land, like they would say. <laughs> and we had lots of farm animals, and we were busy from morning to evening and oh I thought it was fun and one other thing I really remember is like when visitors come to our house and visit my dad and we'd run and hide underneath a table to hear what they're saying that you know the little kids and my dad would say okay no kids outside you know you don't need to be listening to grown-ups talk <laughs> so that was one of my things that I remember about him. And, and to this day, I, I say that to my grandkids. And <laughs> they look at me funny, you know, but that's the way I was raised. So, um, yeah, we got water from the, oh, we got drinking water from the well. There was a well there. And we and then we'd swim in the ditch. It was flowing close by the our house, and we, my sister and I, used to just wade in there and play, getting the fish, and and go swimming in there. And we had a lot of fun. And we had pigs and horses and cows and sheep. And it was it was fun. Uh, every day we had fun things to do. I really enjoyed going to school. That was the best part. At first, uh, the elementary school down they had one here in Duckwater. That's where I went. Then I went to um, the current elementary school at Current Nevada because my dad had had a job there over there. And so we went there and graduated. I graduated from there, the Nye County School. Then I went to Stewart Indian Boarding School. And uh, I really liked it there. And uh, I really liked what they did. They sh showed us how to li live right, you know, clean, clean sheets and wooden floors and and a lot of people, a lot of kids to talk to. Whereas before, we used to just stay on the ranch and have nobody to talk to. And uh, so, and we lived in a little bear house with 
when I was with my dad at Current, we just didn't have any good floors to, um, inside the house. We just had a dirt floor and had to haul water and we just had to, life was a little bit hard, but we made it somehow and after that uh, I went to Stewart and that's where they taught us all the things and I really enjoyed that. I was about uh, 14, 15, uh, my freshman year, freshman year to uh, when I graduated. And I really liked that place. And I know a lot of kids say that about Stuart, and I'm one of them. Um, I just really missed it when I graduated and wished I could have stayed on a little more. And I just really enjoyed Stuart. So how many different tribes were there at Stuart when you were there? Oh my goodness, there were so many. And we'd watch the busloads coming in from Arizona and and the Nevada kids were already there. And uh, there was the Navajos and uh, Apaches and uh, Pimas, Papagos, Hopis. There were just so much Apaches, and so I was just in heaven. <laughs> There's so many kids to talk to, <laughs> and I can't remember how many others tribes, but it was the Washos, Paiutes. On weekends, there were movies that we could go to, and basketball games, and volleyball, and and there was so much to do, like go to the museums, or, or some people worked for families there and earned a little extra money on weekends. And that was nice, and I enjoyed that, and I bought little shoes and stuff with it. And, uh, and there was just about everything going on, and they had a beauty pageant that I can remember, because I was asked to be uh, a pageant person to go from the classes and but uh, I I would always go to the prom and prom uh, with my date and and uh, be sponsored by my uh, my class and that was a good feeling so what were the teachers like there I mean were they all uh, non-Indian, or were there some Indian teachers as well? I remember the one for English was a, a white guy. I think his name was Talbert. I remember his name. <laughs> and uh, I think there was a couple. And who make teacher? She was from Alaska, and she was really good, and I enjoyed that working at the home ec department and it was just fantastic. I just learned so many things my first year there and I didn't know there were things to do and everything because I, you know, I stayed home all the time at the, on the ranch with my dad. And so I was, I was in heaven. Oh, <laughs> my sister went with me too. She, uh, she went to the grade school there in Stewart, so I was with her at that time. But then later on they transferred her to the Fort Apache uh, boarding school in Arizona, so we were separated for a while. Then she came back, and uh, yes, I enjoyed having my sister with me. We went to, uh, a, let's see, I went to, um, I went to school at Haskell. They sent me to Haskell. And uh, I was uh, oh, home, decora <clears throat> home decorating. I took that class and I didn't care for that too much. And then I transferred to the commercial cooking in which I cooked for a whole bunch of people and 
because we all cooked for the whole, whole pupils and the people that were worked there. And there's about to be about a thousand of them, and we had to learn how to, uh, from the recipe book, you know, you had to add or multiply so many dishes and how many pots and pans to, you know, make that. And I, that was a good training for me, food science and everything. It could be all combined into one because they had a high school there for the high school kids. And they had, could be a trade, um, they had painting and all sorts of other things that they could learn. And like my home ec classes and uh, I'm sure they were all combined together. And then the high schools were, would, you know, play other communities, high school, other high school. And we'd go there and cheer them on. And I remember I joined the pep club and had a purple sweater with that big old H there on my sweater. <laughs> and I cheered and that was fun. I enjoyed that too. Oh, they sent me to another um, training school in uh, San Jose. Uh, but that didn't work out because I had an automobile accident and I had crutches on and I couldn't get around the campus too well. And so I ended up coming back and didn't finish that. I think I went to Reno and then after all that I just ended up working in casinos. I was a change girl, had carry lots of money <laughs> and uh, that was fun. And then one day I got married. <laughs> he worked at Stewart. Uh, he's one of the ones who worked at the offices, and and so we got married, and I moved to uh, my, uh, Utah, Mighton, Utah. It's over there by Fort Duchesne. His parents are from there, and uh, and I and but he ended up going to into the army and being gone for two years, and I s stayed with them, the parents there at Mountain, Utah. And uh, then I went back to Nevada and worked in casinos again, and dealing with money, change girl, you know, being away from my husband. I took the graveyard shift and Drank a lot of coffee. <laughs> he came back and we went down to Phoenix. And uh, with me and Lisa, Lisa and I, and she was a little baby then. Mm. We stayed in Phoenix for a long time because he worked at the BIA, BIA office in, on uh, Thomas Road. And he worked there quite a bit. Then, uh, Things didn't work out, so we came, I come back. I didn't return to Nevada. I went to see my sister. She was working in the Bay Area, San Francisco. So she let me come stay with her, and I got to do a lot of things, go to the beach, and uh, go to the beach mainly, and because Lisa loved the ocean, and take pictures on the Golden Gate Bridge, and. We'd go roller skating. Linda used to like to love that, and so Lisa loved that too. So we all went roller skating, and, and I made some friends, and uh, it's, it was great uh, having my sister there and my daughter, and we used to do a lot of things together. So my mother had died, and so we came back to Duckwater, and I ended up staying with my dad. He was staying here with at my brother's house up there, Doug George's place, and he he had a little trailer there, so I ended up staying with him. Then I ended up getting married to a rancher, and here in Duckwater, and he, he had a ranch, and I used to help him with the cows. And, 
just about everything on a farm, um, hay and driving the tractor, <laughs> riding horses. So it was, well, he's gone now, but his name was Donald Sam, and uh, his family was also from here. And so I had a good time. I, I enjoyed the ranch work because I was younger and I could do those things and riding horses. But I left him and filed for divorce and married uh, another guy from here. His name was Alan Lindbeck. And so I went to stay up there with him by Virginia Sanchez house that up there by Bank Ranch. And uh, we had a lot of fun. Um, we went, turned to the church and he was one of the guys that helped run the church, Mormon church, and I helped him sing. And so we were involved in church for a while and those were good days. And then things didn't work out, so I was, I moved on and got a divorce and, and married uh, Mitchell Mays. And so I lived on First Street and we were happy and he was a medicine man and I helped him uh, with his medicine work and because he helped, he enjoyed doing that. And he, uh, I went all over with him and we did uh, helping people. And they called and he went and helped them. It depended on what was wrong and what they were praying for. And if it was something that he had to do twice, we'd go back and he do do that and we went to a lot of uh, um a lot of uh camp outs I remember going to yamba they had a vision quest up in the mountains and i went with him and and that was good i learned a lot of things from that and what it involves, and so I and I was there to help him. And people gave whatever they wanted to. If not, they didn't have to. And uh, just it was just something. He was there to help them. It's at the um, tribe here, at the health department, and uh, my job was to um, help the Indians. Uh, do cultural things like like I showed the kids I had a little class of kids and we'd go out in the ditches and find the willows and we'd, um, we'd show them the right kind and there was a person here from uh, his, she was my mother-in-law and she helped me because she was very good at making willow baskets and stuff. But first we had to get in the ditches and get the right ones and how to soak the willows and how to split them. And it's quite a good project and it had community involvement and some of the teachers would help too and they'd come in. You had to get them before they flowered. And so, you know, so, so it won't be so hard to get the scrape off the leaves. The class and I and and that lady, uh, we made uh, we, we made a little little small miniature uh, cradle cradle boards. And I also taught them how to make moccasins and how to do bead work on them and I remember just being with them and showing these and the kids enjoyed that. Some young people, they um, disrespect their elders. And, you know, when they come into a room and they don't have a seat and the kids are all sitting down and 
Not one of them will get up and, you know, offer their seats. And uh, they'll uh, not acknowledge them or just go walk past them and don't say hello. And I think that's one of the things that really bother me. And uh, uh, I know my grandson, Alex, is, is, is good at that. He, he likes to help people. He's, he's never mean to the elders because I taught him not to be mean. I'm very glad for that. And uh, I wish more kids would be nice to the elders and they could learn a lot from them. They could, they could show you how to do things. And I think that's missing in our culture today. For additional information, or to refer an elder of the Great Basin who may be interested in contributing an oral story for preservation, contact Norm Kavanaugh, director of GBIA. Great Basin Indian Archives, brought to you by Great Basin College and sponsored by Barrick Gold North America.